In Navisworks, we can create renderings of viewpoints to create images with evocative stylistic effects or photorealism for use in print or digital media. One important end use for the image files we generate from our composite modeling is for communicating technical issues. Customized viewpoints essentially can act as 3D schematics that communicate the same information that marked up 2D drawings offered in traditional design processes, but with even more dense information and context. Let's explore how we can modify, simplify, and customize this view to make very apparent the issues we hope to communicate to the technical team. First, we'd be better off hiding the architectural elements since they are now obstructing the view. Then, why don't we add an override to these individual joist elements to highlight how they conflict with the ducts. Finally, we can add some measurements that have to do with the clearances that should occur between the joists and ducts and we'll make them red lines so that they get saved to the viewpoint. Finally, let's name this viewpoint descriptively and update it so the current view settings are saved. Now let's look at adding photorealism and other effects to images in order to communicate the overall project to broader audiences. The presenter module offers many choices for adding materials, textures, lighting, effects, and content to enhance scene images for many purposes, whether technical or communicative in nature. In the first tab, Materials, Navisworks makes available a whole library of existing materials and also lets us create our own. Let's navigate the folders and drag all the materials we expect to use into the palette on the right hand side. Spend some time familiarizing yourself with the library. Let's go ahead and select some materials. Glass for the glazing, stone finish for the skin, concrete for structural items and floors, wrought iron for railings, this high gloss cream color for interior walls, perhaps some different metals, aluminum, brushed steel, cast zinc, Nickel. Here's a landscape cover for our plantings. Oak. Spanish tile for the roof. Another paint color, white. And some gray paving. Presenter is another tool where we can leverage our sets, as they will be a convenient way to quickly select element groups cutting across the entire composite model. Once elements are selected, we can right-click on the material and choose Apply to Selected Items. Let's go through and apply appropriate materials to our model. Since we don't have a planting set, let's select those manually in the selection tree and then apply the material. We can even separate out components within any given element to which we'll apply different materials as needed. For example, this fountain is made up of a structural material and the water material, and we should apply materials accordingly. Also, we can easily modify the colors or other properties of any material by double-clicking on the material 
and editing it in the pop-up window. Another presenter tab is Lighting. Lights and light studios can be taken directly from the library and applied to the scene by simply dropping them into the palette. There is a broad array of options both for lighting shadows and spotlight positioning, etc., which to an expert user becomes very powerful for achieving desired effects. For our purposes here, let's rely on a standard light studio as a starting point. This introduces just enough light attributes to make our scene much more realistic. Additionally, a modeler could strategically add point and spotlights around the scene. Point lights are good to light up a dark area of the scene, while spotlights can add an element of drama and enhance realism. Let's double click on the distant icon to enter into the properties window and make sure the shadows are turned on. And here we can experiment with hard and soft shadows. Within the Effects tab, we can add backgrounds and foregrounds to liven up our model and to communicate information about its end use and location. To set up an effect for the render, we simply drag a style from the archive to the palette. We might want a simple gradient sky background, which can be achieved by using this standard blue color gradient. Or perhaps we'd like an outdoor view as a background image. Additionally, there are cloud images or many other types of images. Finally, within the Rendering tab, we configure how the image will be rendered. We can render at different quality settings, as well as rendering with stylistic effects such as sketchy or blurry, or, or here, an effect of being drawn by a felt tip pen. These might be particularly useful when presenting conceptual drawings of the initial architectural design. Once you've set your rendering attributes, from the Output tab, we can choose Render Image and Render to any number of different image file formats, which later can be shown in presentations, displayed on websites, used in print, and so on.